Thank you for joining us today for a real moment. Relationships expressing anointed love. Thank you for taking time to come and uh, feast on the word of God. Yes, these are opportunities we take to try to address matters that pertain to relationships and then begin to look through the lens of Scripture so that we can follow God's instruction regardless of whatever our experiences may be. So today what I want to talk about, I want to talk about being able to deny discouragement through encouragement. You may say, well, Pastor, what is it you're trying to deny? I'm, I'm trying to deny the fact that discouragement will come to paralyze you emotionally. To, to, to hinder you from moving in the right direction with God for your life, to make you feel like there is no hope. So this is something that we have to deal with. And so today, I want us to talk about it because when it comes to discouragement, no matter how long you've been in the Lord and how, how spiritual you are, uh, discouragement is one of those life experiences that we all get to share in. Regardless of our gender, our age, our race, our religion, uh, what side of the track we grew up on, or what kind of uh, family we come from, discouragement is something we all can relate to. Now, here's the question. How do I respond to my discouragement? And that's what we want to talk about today because that makes the difference of how encouragement will have an impact on your whole life. Now, I say your whole life because discouragement affects everything around us, even the people around us. They become sometimes uh, uh, victims of our discouragement. We take it out on somebody else. Well, David is one of those biblical characters I believe we all can relate to. Children can read about him in their children's church. Youth can read about him in their youth uh, sessions. And adults can hear about him. Why? Because the Bible exposes us to every phase of David's life. We see him as a little boy. We see him as a young man. We see him as an adult. We see him as a great leader. And so I think we all can gain some from David's experience. Now, when we look at David's life, one thing I know about David, that he was not a, a pessimistic person. He wasn't a person that uh, talked negative and thought negative. And you, you know, you know some people like that. And if you're like that, you may want to. Uh, and if you uh, don't think you like that, but you like that, you may want to ask some people close to you and ask them, if, "Am I a very negative person? Do most things that come out of my mouth, let's say 80% of the stuff that come out of my mouth, are always negative? Well, if that is, you need to work on that." Because if you're a very pessimistic person, uh, uh, you're going to find it very difficult to know how to encourage yourself, and definitely you won't be able to encourage others. Well, let's go ahead and just consider, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, we have a case here where David and his men were going to war. They were fighting. God was with them. And so this, this particular army that was always a thorn in the flesh to Israel, the Amalekites, what they did, they backtracked. Even though David was fighting in his army, they went back to their city. They went back to Ziklag, the city of David. And they captured the city while David and his men were out to war. And they took all the women and children. Thank God, God did not allow them to kill them. But they, they took them captive. But they burned the entire city. So when David and his men came back from war, you know, they'd been victorious out there on the battlefield. But at home, things, was, things were in shambles. And they were discouraged what they saw. And so the scripture tells us, in 1 Samuel 30 and 6, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because all the people were bitter in soul, each for his sons and daughters. Listen, listen, all of David's men, when they got back, I don't think it was probably every one of them, but there was a great number of them who wanted to blame somebody. Listen, when you're discouraged, when you're dealing with pain in your life, it's normal to look for somebody to blame or lash out at. That's why it's important that we handle this discouragement the right way. Way. And I believe the way God wants us to handle it is through encouragement. And so here David is in the midst of this already uh, experience that he's having the same experience they're having. David doesn't have his family. David's children, they're, they're gone as well. But the Bible say and teaches us how David handled this discouragement. First of all, uh, he witnessed and experienced the same thing others did. But he chose to react differently. He did not allow his negative emotions to get the best of him, even though he is experiencing the same pain and it is real. You know, the Bible said in Isaiah 30 and 19, God said to Israel, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today. I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live in your descendants. You know, we get the right to choose even in the midst of discouragement. We still are decision makers. And God encourages us to make the decision that pertains to life, to godliness. Why? Because that decision will determine how the people around you is, if, is 
it is affected by that discouragement. Another thing I noticed is that David protected his heart from his accusers' actions and words, so he didn't allow bitterness to get in his heart, and he didn't allow, and he didn't allow a retaliating spirit to get on him. You know, here the men that was by his side fighting with him, and now the same men are accusing him and literally want, want to take his life. We know David had learned through his journey how to be able to handle his enemies and even friends who betrayed him. In Psalms 109, verse 4 and 5, it says this, For my love, they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer, and they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for love. David was responding in prayer and love in his life when people treated him a certain way. And saints, I'm telling you, it takes the grace of God to be able to do that. You see, he, he positioned himself to respond spiritually to the matter by preparing his heart and mind to seek the Lord. Prayer became his weapon of choice in this situation. David went to prayer. He sought the Lord. Hallelujah. And so he was able well, He was able to handle that discouragement with encouragement. Well, I want to encourage you now on next week. I want you to come back because we're going to see how this thing worked out. Because I mean, you know he encouraged himself, but man, that encouragement had a powerful impact on his life, on, on, on the life of all of those people around him, on the life of those who were taken captive. God bless you today. Focus on being an encourager first. Encourage yourself. Learn how to encourage yourself. Speak the word of God over your life. Thank the things that God think toward you. Speak, speak life to others. Encourage others. And uh, watch how God begin to bring an encouraging anointing on your life. God bless you. Have a great day.